Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Uh, my good name morning. is Robert Bullard, and I am the uh, Dean of the Barbara George McWilliams School of Public Affairs uh, here at Texas Southern University. And uh, for the last 30 years, I've uh, researched uh, issues related to uh, environment, equity, justice, um, energy, and climate. And uh, the report that, uh, that was issued by the NAACP is important in that it um, places uh, energy and climate at the center of civil rights and human rights. Uh, this, this year, uh, we commemorated uh, a number of, of uh, historic um, events. Uh, this, was the, this is the 50th uh, uh, anniversary of the uh, Civil Rights Act of 1964, which is significant. Um, and if we also think about uh, uh, 2014, it's, um, it's also the 20th anniversary of the signing of the uh, Environmental Justice Executive Order that was signed by President Clinton in, uh, 2000, in 1994. Uh, if you put uh, the issue of environment, energy, and health uh, as basic rights, uh, you can see how this report uh, uh, from uh, the NAACP and, and our report from uh, Texas Southern University, uh, they really uh, fit. Uh, if we look at the, the results from the, the NAACP and the finding that, that uh, only 1.1% of any of the jobs is going to the African Americans and less than one tenth of one percent of the of the uh, of the revenues is going to uh, businesses. You can see squarely that uh, even though our economy uh, is moving toward uh, uh, a green economy future, it's clearly not uh, distributed in a way that would provide uh, uh, equity benefits for all. And so, what we have said all along is that uh, if we are to have a healthy, sustainable, livable, um, and, and, and just future, it means that these numbers have to change. And, and looking at uh, energy as one major sector for that. Uh, climate change is probably the number one uh, environmental justice human rights issue of the 21st century. Uh, there is no place that, uh, that will not be impacted. And the communities that contribute the least to uh, greenhouse gases and climate change and global warming, uh, these are the communities that already feel the pain and suffering and the disproportionate impact uh, of climate change um, first, worst, and longest. Whether we're talking about uh, the impact of severe weather events, whether it's, um, whether it's hurricanes and whether it's flooding or whether it's droughts uh, or, or other kinds of uh, severe weather events, uh, we can see that people, the frontline communities are, are definitely um, uh, having uh, concerns in terms of how policies are made. A lot of the policies that flow from our energy policies have a direct impact on on uh, how communities are, uh, what communities are placed at risk. The president's recent uh, uh, proposal to uh, to reduce uh, uh, carbon pollution from coal-fired power plants is a major uh, is a major uh, uh, strategy to address um, uh, carbon pollution. But it but it's more than just addressing carbon pollution. Because when you look at the reports that have been done over the last 10, 15 years, and the more recent reports that's done by the NAACP, called Bloody, shows that these power plants are not randomly distributed. Uh, for example, African Americans have a 20% uh, smaller carbon footprint than the, large, than the society at large. We uh, consume less energy in terms of we tend to have smaller houses, we tend not to have cars. We are more dependent on public transit, uh, and you talk about we're not likely to have, we're less likely to have air conditioning. And so, when you talk about 
the production of greenhouse gases uh, per individual, per capita, is less for African Americans and Latinos. But if you look at the communities that have to uh, live near these power plants, uh, it's just the opposite. 68% of African Americans live within um, a 30 mile radius of these coal plants. So reducing our um, reducing the reducing the the number of coal plants and our dependency uh, will not only have uh, impacts in terms of lowering greenhouse gases, but also lowering the coal pollutants that come from these facilities. That is the 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 NOx, the SOx, the PM 2.5, the particulates, uh, the mercury, the, the arsenic, the lead, all that heavy metals, which go up in the air, come down, and people are impacted with health. And so when we talk about uh, the having a clean energy and a just energy climate policy, a just climate policy, uh, it, it's placed in the context of how benefits can accrue to those populations that generally have not uh, been uh, uh, included. If you look at the recent uh, employment, uh, uh, the employment, unemployment rates dropped to 6.1%. Uh, but if you look at unemployment rate for the last 50 years, African American unemployment rate has always been twice. Uh, the African American unemployment rate for June is 10.7, and for Latinos is 7.8, and for whites is 5.3. So in order to impact the unemployment, and we talk about energy as one of those major growth industries, we need to make sure that those policies are fair, just, and equitable. And finally, um, I think it's important to understand uh, that having the nation's largest and oldest civil rights organization to take the lead on this issue is a big deal. Uh, it's not just uh, uh, something that can grab you know, a headline or uh, uh, can get on television or, or whatever. It's a big deal because of having its center in the whole context of this is a civil rights issue, it's an economic justice rights issue, and it's a major health issue.